This video is going to cover the topic of finding the percent increase and or decrease. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of the page. The essential question guiding this video is how can we use proportions to calculate the percent increase and decrease of a value? Last year, we did a lot of work with percentages so that we know from that work that percentages are just a ratio. And that ratio is one that has been scaled either up or down to be out of a total of 100. In fact, we often used this setup, proportional setup. So it was part over whole was equivalent, an equivalent ratio to whatever the percent is out of 100. So for example, if we needed to know what 20% of 50 is, we could potentially set it up with our proportion, and we know that we're trying to figure out what part out of 50 is equivalent to 20% always out of 100. And with that setup, we have a couple choices of how we could proceed, but maybe you would notice that this was something that was multiplied by a half. So we would do the same thing on the top to keep it proportional, and so our answer would have been 10. And as long as we had three out of the four pieces in these two proportions or in these two ratios, we were able to figure out the fourth, right? And we always know at least one of them. We always know there's a 100 there on the bottom. So in this case, right, if you answer 13 out of 20 test questions correctly, we could still set this up knowing three out of the four. We always know that our percent's out of 100. This time we don't know the percent, but we know that we got the part 13 correct out of the whole total of 20. Right. And once again, we could use that scale factor. You also might remember seeing something like this last year where we did this butterfly and we could kind of loop these together and we can multiply 13 times 10, or excuse me, times 100, and then take that answer and divide it by 20 and that will get us our total as well, which in this case would be 65%. So the answer here would be 65% on that test. So that's kind of what we did last year. We're gonna add on to that for this year. And so what we're looking at now is that sometimes we look at how much something has changed, how much it's increased or decreased off of its original amount. So you can see some images here where these advertisements are telling us that there's 25% more than there used to be, right, in both of these examples, or in the, um, this laundry detergent, it looks like, this is 50% more than you originally had. So sometimes we see this and we call this a percent change or percent increase or decrease. And it means we're seeing how much it's changed relative to its original amount. And for this, we can still use our proportions. We just have to change our setup a, a little bit, just change it slightly. So I still have my percent over 100, that doesn't change. But instead of saying part and whole, I'm gonna go ahead and write here that this is the change, how much it's changed out of its original amount. And we'll kind of look at that through some examples, but that's the way we would set up the proportions um, to look at percent change. Let's use COVID cases as an example here. So if the number of cases was 10 yesterday and today there were 25, we might be asked or might be wondering what the percent increase was, or that might be something you would hear as people were talking about this. So of course I know that the percent is what I'm trying to find out of 100. And now I'm gonna look at what I need to know here. I know the original number yesterday that I'm comparing it to was 10. And then there were 25 the next day. So if I do a quick calculation here, I know that it's changed 15 cases. There are 15 more than there were yesterday. So this would be my setup. And maybe I would do the butterfly method. Maybe I would look for a scale factor. In this one, it looks like this is pretty friendly. So I'd say this is 10 times as much. So I would do the same thing here. And 15 times 10 is, of course, 150. And you might hear someone describe this as a 150% increase from one day to the next. That was an example of seeing percent increase or decrease in data and statistics, which we see a whole lot, but we also see it a lot with um, money, right? So here's an example with money, and it's a pair of shoes that was $60, and now it's on sale for just $40. 
the question you might wonder is what the percent increase is, or excuse me, decrease in this case, in the price of the shoes, right? So what percent are you saving by buying them on sale? And again, you wanna fill in what you know. So we know that we're trying to find the percent out of 100, and we know the original price was $60, and it's on sale for 40, right? So that means there's a change of 20 bucks. So my change here is 20. It's a change of $20 out of an original price of 60. And this time it's a little bit harder for me to just scale it, right? I don't necessarily see what I can multiply 60 by. So I might use my butterfly method here for this one. So I would do my 20 times 100, and that would get me 2,000. And then I would take my 2,000 and divide it by my remaining value of 60. And if you do that, you'll end up getting, I think my calculator or my calculations would tell me that this would keep going on forever. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and round it to the nearest percent, and that would be about a 33% decrease. So I'm saving 33% on those shoes by buying them on sale. This last one I'll have you try on your own, and it more matches with those images that I shared earlier in the video, where a product is being sold with more in it than previously. So this one says a box of cereal that is usually 20 ounces is now 25 ounces. So they've made it um, a little bit more, but they'll still sell it for the same price, which is great. By what percentage did the box of cereal increase? So what was the percent increase of this box? And so that's the one you'll have to try on your own and be sure that your answer is visible for me when I um, check your work. And remember that the essential question of this video was how can we use proportions to calculate the percentage increase or decrease um, of a value? So hopefully you'll kind of have a reference back from last year that you can think about with percentages and see how you can make that now work for percent increase and decrease. Be sure, of course, to leave any questions that you might have um, in your notes and we can certainly talk about it in class together.